Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about Canon EOS R8. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing we are talking about R8. It's a basically low-cost R-mount entry, meaning back in the days, uh, Nikon released a very successful series, uh, R RCM say, uh, 3000 series, Nikon D3100, D3200. These cameras were immensely popular because they were very low-cost entry into DSLR market. Same is doing here for Canon R-mount because again, Canon has upgraded from DSLR to mirrorless, so they have to create a new champion. Basically, buy this and don't regret it and then continue to invest in Canon. Basically, gateway drug, what we called it. Now, this puppy is small, compact and lightweight. Now, the reason for those things is very simple because if you are not aware of how big and bulky these cameras are, especially if you are only used to uh, basically a smartphone, you will be shocked how big these things are. Again, for people who are using it, they're like, I know, but people who are not, they will be like, bit chonkash, what the hell is this? So generally, it's a very good way to make sure that your gateway is very lightweight. It's not like, holy damn, this is heavy. It's like, Okay, you know, you want it comfortable. So small, compact and lightweight. Now it has flip out screen. Now this is a very good decision. I'm very happy that industry has finally learned it. Just put the goddamn flip out screen in everything. Digital hot shoe, which is also a good add on that allows this camera to expand its swing because you can add a shotgun mic or a smartphone holder that allows you to use smartphone as a basically wireless beacon. So to say it will dump file into online. So good thing, modern technology, 24 megapixels. So it's not the latest and greatest, nor is worse. It's like, it's good enough. 24 megapixel full frame with quality lens can give you more than good enough results for almost 100% of the task. So that's good. Now, uh, R8 MSRP is around, at this time of making video, is around $1,500 for the body only. And price projected to be in India, it should be around 1,25,000. Now be very mindful. Uh, me making this video at this point in time i did not fail i did not find any data cost data about indian price again it should be available soon and that's why i do not want to make launch reviews the moment the launch happened it's like i need that cost i'm hoping it should be around this price and most likely it would be now the biggest selling point of this entry is that this can do 4k many camera can do 4k 30 fps without crop nowadays but zero no no camera at this price point can do 4k 60 without crop nothing if you want 4k 60 if that's like that's your jam like i need 4k 60 this is your only camera for this kind of price so this is canon eos r8 so what was specification well think of it this way somebody took r6 mark 2 and they just yeeted the costly part out of it so basically no ibus which may not be a very good decision simply because back in the days of dslr basically eos uh, series cameras uh, like i have 800d the uh, assumption was there is no IBUS. So every lens uh, after a certain cost point and after certain years became all of them had uh, basically image stabilization. All of them. Like it you, does not matter you buy third party, it does not matter you buy first party. Most of them will always have image stabilization. That was the assumption. But in mirrorless, many lenses started to reach market. I'm talking first party lenses and also third party. They're assuming there will be IBUS. Even in Canon series, where they're like the body, uh, the lens body itself does not have image stabilization. So removing IBUS is uh, not that desirable. And that's why you will notice Canon, uh, basically Sony, even in their cheap series, like 7C series, they still have IBUS because again, their lenses no longer have it. Lens, only telephoto lens nowadays by default have image stabilization. Almost everybody else is like removing it, which is a very awkward situation. It's like either you make IBUS as a default thing, R mount cameras have IBUS, and then only you can be like damn sure it's like every lens has image stabilization or make every lens have it. So it's very awkward situation. Some lens do, some don't, some prime do, some don't, some zoom has it, some don't. Very awkward. So please do your research. It has single card slot, but it has UHS2, which is very good. And it has very tiny battery of basically LP17, uh, this battery, LP17, used in my 800T. Uh, now these are tiny battery. Now it does not have 30 minute recording limit, which I'm very happy about because if Canon EOS RP did not have 30 minute recording limit, I would have bought that. I have, again, that also used the same battery, same battery as mine. And I also have one full frame lens. So I could have used that directly, but it had 30 minute recording limit. I did not care about 4K back then, I still don't, but I do care about 30 minute recording limit. So uh, that's, um, at that time, European Union had removed the law. Canon was just like, F the customer. So. It does not have 30 minutes recording, but only in 30 FPS. If you go to 4K 60 FPS or HD 180 FPS, they have 30 minute limit. It's like, what if we F the customer, you know? It's like, what if somebody bought this camera and be like, hey, I can do 4K 60 continuously. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
you bought this camera thinking that it has 4K 60 gifts, like does not mean you can use it, 30 minute limit. And be mindful, this has nothing to do with overheating. If it was overheating, they would have flat out said, until overheats. It's like, because again, there are many cinema cameras that overheats in like 5 to 10 minutes. That's why they have cooling fans. So it does make sense. And again, that would be, if it's overheating related, it would be ambient dependent rather than time limited. It would be ambient limited. Hey, if you are using in a hot ambient, it may not last as long. If you're using in Alaska, go you lower it. So that's a very, very bad thing. However, it does have raw burst because again, they removed the cost, uh, basically quality shutter. They have very cheap shutter in this. So the electronic one, they did not compromise. So it has the same horsepower of six R6 Mark II. So you can do pre-burst. What does that mean? That simply means you half pressure shutter, it starts to take raw, uh, but the raw is no longer saved in memory card. It keeps cycling into the buffer. Buffer is like a DRAM kind of scenario. So it's keep doing it. So if you are looking at a bird, you know birds are not gonna stay in one location for very long. You know birds are like, you start to take your shutter, bird flies away, you press the full shutter button. Half shutter, you trigger it, full, you stop it. And at the time of stopping, it will save few seconds before it, before you did the full press. So you had armed, triggered almost like how high speed works and it's a very good system if you're doing certain kind of bird photography or even for basically if you are waiting for batsmen to do the perfect hit you will be like before the baller the moment baller left the ball you will start to trigger it because again you do not know when you will get that perfect took so raw pre-burst is very desirable it does have canon uh, log 3 and hdr uh, for, uh, profiles which again many desirable may not be desirable up to you but it does have good autofocus it does have good autofocus because again the core is exactly the same as r6 mark 2 so it's not compromised it's a like, really good camera with just cost cutting a lot of cost cutting no ivers no dual cut slot teeny tiny battery and uh, you know weird things so what we can expect in the terms of performance? Well, it's a good camera quality. Basically, it's much better than what you could have had back in the days or a uh, few years ago where there was no competition, Canon was releasing garbage. So it's fundamentally very good camera quality, but it does have slow burst. Do not expect this to even in electronic shuttering, even like electronic has 40 FPS, here's deal. If you are shooting at 40 FPS and you want 40 FPS, there is a good chance things have motion. That means at that point in time, the rolling shutter will come back to bite you. So again, if your things do not affect, basically rolling shutter is not an issue for you, go YOLO. If it is an issue, you will realize it's a slow camera, inherently slow camera. But battery life is very limited. Now in this regard, Sony has done amazing job reducing e-waste, reducing headache for the customer, reducing hassle for everyone, including shopkeepers, is that all full frames have one dot battery. D8, Z1000, go home. You have Sony, full frame, Here's this battery, take it, go home. Canon has way too many battery models. Now, I think at this point in time, Canon is realizing that and Canon is trying to standardize two or three batteries. One battery for the professional series and another like this one uh, for low lightweight models. Basically, this is also used in Canon RP. Uh, many DSLRs also have this, for example, my 800D. So they may be trying to standardize that for poor people and for rich people. They will may be trying to do that. Sony has that same thing, but they have garbage in uh, APS-C lineup. In full frame, they're like, okay, every full frame has one big battery. Done, go home, it's awesome. So, and this battery simply means even though camera can record 4K 30 FPS for unlimited like around two hours until it actually overheats, uh, you will reach a point where this battery would have died. Battery will generally give you one hour. So again, okay, tiny battery, talking from experience. And I would seriously urge you, if you have to buy this camera, uh, buy two batteries and buy something like this, uh, basically a USB charger, this puppy, it's much more cost effective. So, and this is one thing that I'm starting to notice is like every camera company CEOs is like, you know, we are not selling enough cameras, camera market is shrinking. That is absolutely mathematically true. But here's the deal. They are the one digging their own grave. It's like, why the heck you are removing functions that was a standard function years ago? For example, my 800D that is released years ago, it's like five years ago I have bought this, had all I function. Now this is from Canon. I'm not saying this, this is from Canon. Uh, basically, Canon have two modes of recording in majority of their camera is IPB and all I. Now all I is the fact is world is continuous, okay? So you take shot, you take shots. Now, how do you store it? Generally, you can't store it raw because the file size will require a freaking server. So you compress it. So you take a keyframe, you compress it, you store it. You take a keyframe, compress it, store it. And if you store all frames, we call it all I. And then 
this is amazing for video editor meaning if you want to do anything in your computer with this file your comp even though the file size will be huge this would be like at least three or four times larger than ipb but this will work like a butter why because any software take uh, basically davinci resolve take premiere pro you give them all i format they're like okay I got it. You move your playhead. It does not have to do any rendering. If playhead's here, okay, there is a frame. It here, there is a frame. Now, if you do IPB system, it literally has to render out these frames. So even if you're moving your playhead, of course, this rendering is happening in the background. It's not like render, render file. It's just like it's happening in the background. And that's why the playhead will lag. It's like you move the playhead here. It's like, okay, there is an iframe. There is an iframe. There is prediction frame. There is a block frame. It has to move all that data, do all the calculation. It basically is on the fly trying to render it. That's why under no circumstances any professional will ever touch IPB format. Now why the heck Canon had that? The idea is very simple. IPB is a direct delivery system, meaning if you are doing a, basically a kid's Christmas party, you're not gonna do Photoshop on it. You're not gonna do editing on it. You're just gonna like, here's the footage, I'm gonna give it to my family. Use IPB, file sizes are lighter, awesome. You're like, hey, I'm gonna do a home movie and this sort of thing, go to all I use all the frame now it do editing everything is awesome save the file super awesome everybody enjoys everybody is happy this is from years ago this is from digic 5 processor i think canon 5d mark ii that's where i think the site is mine have it mine like 800d has it like this is a standard function canon is removing this function now they're like you, even though our memory cards are now far larger than it used to be uh, far faster than it used to be and somehow the canon is like what if we f the customer you know this is not a normal tool anymore this is not somebody is like oh i bought like you know nikon d3100 it's not that price anymore it's expensive so only professionals who have either serious hobby or are very seriously committed into this they are buying this so they want this option and canon understood it that's why they had it now they are like, what if we remove this option? And again, most people do not understand the importance of it. So they will not notice it until they try to do video editing. They're like, why the heck my computer is slow? Then people who do not understand this was the problem. They're like, oh, you have to buy a very high end computer. No, you don't. Just buy something that has all light or buy old Canon camera you used to have it. So it's one of those things. And overheating, again, that's a fake thing. If it was thermally limited, it cannot be 30 minute guarantee. That would like, hey, if using an ambient temperature of 24 degrees Celsius, you should work for 30 minutes. It's not that, it's like 30 minutes. Oh, that means it's an artificial limit. It's like, what if you use the camera you bought? <gasps> that cannot happen. Like, you know, the camera industry is dying. We must end it. So it's, it's really frustrating. At some point, it's like, why are you throttling your own equipment? Again, small battery, I get it. I get it. A small, uh, basically weak shutter uh, mechanism. I get it. It's a very expensive to make a mechanical shutter that is that good. It's expensive. I get it. Unless you go to basically uh, what we call global shutter, that's the only option we can do. I get it. Why the heck you are removing things that we had there since Digic Five? And be mindful, this processor, Digic X processor, used in all high ends, they have this function. You know the ironic part? Panasonic is removing all eye, and they're like, uh, you have to buy a higher end camera to get all eye. I'm like. Bro, you're not selling enough. You do not have that big dick energy anymore. <sighs> this is really frustrating. It's like, you used to have it. You used to understand it. If somebody is doing direct delivery, IPB, awesome. If somebody is doing editing, all I, awesome. We used to have it. Now they're like, what if we F the customer with tiny batteries? So should you buy it or not? Here's the deal. Let me be very clear. If you are buying something low cost, don't. The end, go home, don't. Because flat out, at this point in time, back in the days of Nikon D3100 or D3200, there was no smartphone alternative that was good enough. Nowadays, that's no longer so. For the price of this puppy with a body and lens, I'm talking basic package that most people will buy. Uh, you can buy a smartphone. Actually, you can buy a one terabyte edition of S23 Ultra. At that point in time, the moment you use this, you will be disappointed. Why? Because you will be expecting what people expect. The first time buyers, they're like, oh, I have this camera. It's like, wait a minute, every YouTuber that you are seeing, majority of them do not use these lenses. They have their high-end lenses, basically these puppy. But here's the ironic part. If you are able to buy this, you will never buy this body. This body is too cheap for you. You will buy something that has dual card slot. You will buy something that has truly high burst performance. You will never buy this. So you see the paradox? Like you will buy this because you cannot afford anything better. So you will buy it with kit lens. And the moment you use kit lens, you'll be like, huh. Again, kit lenses are not bad, but here's the mobile have caught up to it. It's no longer, it's like DSLR or nothing. It's like amazing flagship phone in your pocket, which is amazing in terms of photography ability, flat out compared to result of the cheapest, the most cost cut 
hardware that a company could make and give you a plastic body which is fragile takes up much more space and you will be disappointed like the first thing first time you will show photo of this from kit lens not from like oh i have f1.8 lens no 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 from kit lens people will like that's it like again why because people are used to shallow background of uh, you know shallow depth of field in smartphone people are used to that they are expecting that so at that point in time this will be give you sad output lame and sad output and if you are buying this worry there is a good chance you cannot afford this simply because first party lenses are very expensive now i'm like what about third party again canon has flat out blocked it canon will not allow third party lenses to happen on our mount that's why there is no third party even though this mount has been out for three years and you can see uh, nikon already started to have that e-mount have lot of option so you can afford things in e-mount you can buy an expensive body and start out with a cheap third party lens and then next scale up as you get more money here you can't do that you have to have our mount or some adapter EF mount, which I generally do not recommend because at that point in time, people are like, performance is really not, again, not bad, but not as good as our mount should be. So that's the whole point. And what will you gain if you buy a mobile phone like S23 Ultra? You will have ease of use. This of this camera, I can guarantee you, if you are old enough, as in like in your 30s, you know people who have bought those sort of DSLR, like very budget DSLRs. And most of them just converted those DSLR into paperweight. Why? Ease of use. Performance means nothing if ease of use is not there. Meaning, it's like, this is amazingly amazing. Just, it gives you aneurysm when you are trying to use it. People are like, here's the deal. Uh, they will never open it again. You will know people. I guarantee this that you know people that have done this with their equipment. You're like, hey, isn't that guy bought like this DSLR then they're not using it? That's the reason. So mobile does mobile have ease of use. And mobile manufacturers, they're like, dude, please give us time. We're going to give you a goddamn James Webb telescope in your pocket. Just trust us. Just trust us for more one more year. Compared to camera phone, what if we remove the function that we used to give? What if we, instead of micro HDMI going to full HDMI, what if we go to mini HDMI that nobody has? Oh, pardon me. And like mine has mini HDMI, which is again, not great, not terrible. But they're like, what if we give micro HDMI? What if we create more e-waste on this world? Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that would be awesome? Wouldn't that be like, oh, we can have sell more, far more Ethernet cables? Like, at this point in time, it would be practically far more cheaper if they did USB-C to uh, basically HDMI. Be mindful, you can do that if uh, modern flagship S23 Ultra has HDMI output. Not even joking. So you can have ease of use in mobile phone, more capabilities, meaning this will be like, oh, 4K 30FPS, uh, 60FPS, I'm gonna lock it. This is like, bro, 8K, go YOLO. It's like, uh, what if like, you know, the, if you do this, I will block this, if you do this, no, 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 no limits. As long as you have memory, go YOLO. In terms of editing the file, you can't even rename files on this properly. And not to mention, I genuinely have high blood pressure because of this, it's like, why the heck nobody figured out that they have Bluetooth chip in this? Use headphones? Like, when was the last time you knew the a camera company that had Bluetooth and somebody figured out that in 1992 that we figured out how to transfer audio over Bluetooth? Use Bluetooth headphones. Everybody has it now. How about in this? How about I pair a Bluetooth headphone and then use that for monitoring? Okay, not real time, but at least for playback. But they're like, what if we give 1990s garbage to customer? You know, wouldn't that be amazing? Yes. What if we did not allow the... We'll have 10,000 apps do this do that will not allow transfer raw file even though you can have lightroom in your mobile phone that can directly process the raw files that's the thing that's why i'm saying the modern smartphone is exponentially much better than what it used to be and i have linked a video down below of s22 versus a sony with a good lens not with kit lens with kit lens is a done deal kit with the kit lens is a done deal the moment you compare it to with a good lens now you're like okay now it's a compare and if you're buying this with body only, you if this versus S23 Ultra, yeah, S23 Ultra will win 98% of the time. And the likelihood of you using S23 Ultra is much higher. The likelihood of you editing your photos, the likelihood of you using it, trying to improve your skills, because again, everything about this camera is like, hey, let me be as accommodating to you as possible. It will give you 10 bit, it will give you 12 bit, it will give you HDMI output. It will, like they are, these companies are working their ass off to give you the most professional experience on a pocket device. This company is like, what if we remove functions? So fundamentally, you can edit it and you can post it. People are getting paid for Instagram posts nowadays. So directly posting it from Instagram saves you money, directly affecting your income. So all that versus a garbage camera. Again, weird limitations, outdated technology, tiny battery it's like what are you saying again if you bought this fundamentally means you cannot afford these lenses without these lenses you will not have the truly wow performance whereas like 
no, I get it why you have such a big bulky camera. This puppy nowadays is barely able to handle like, you know, a smartphone and be mindful smartphone is still cheaper. Flagship smartphone is still $1,000, $1,023. And if you are going one terabyte, then the price will match. So trust me, like for who this is, this is basically suited for low income professional, meaning you are making money from it, but you're not making enough money because be mindful. I do not get it. How the heck any professional will have single card slot. But again, I do understand that most of you do not have that kind of money. So I get it. And you have to show up in your quote unquote job with uh, basically actual camera. I get it. But this is a very chicken and egg kind of scenario because in that scenario, lenses will give you a better quality and having better Sony E-mount third party lens selection would be far more advantageous. Even though Sony's video performance may be a little bit lacking, not in terms of autofocus or in terms of color quality, in terms of basically the fact that it does not do 4K 60 uncropped. It does uh, 60K most of the time they will do cropping. So should you buy this or not flat out? If you are as an enthusiast, unless you are getting paid for this or you will be making money out of this, just buy a flash ship. Flat out, these sort of cameras are done. Like this attitude of camera company was like, what if we give 1990s garbage to people? And what if we F the customer? It's like, it's just not gonna fly anymore, flat out. No, no, like micro HD, I have mini, like why the heck you didn't, instead of going to full, they're like, what if we create more e-waste? It's like I fundamentally hate these camera companies now. So should you buy this or not? Hell no, not for enthusiasts. And again, for professional, I get it. You are limited. Uh, you may not be like starting your career. I get it. But try to save up for something that has dual cards. You do not want to show up a wedding where it's like, uh, sir, uh, I cannot give you photos because my one single card failed. And it has happened. That's why every server, everything that is critical is dually backup. You do not want to learn that the hard way. Trust me. So this was my presentation on Canon R8. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press this like. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.